probably in a, an environment where commodity prices, real estate, uh, tangible assets generally are going to do much better uh, than the, the financial markets. And um, so we were dealing with that scenario. And as you know, uh, we were looking at data and actually more than a year ago anticipated a very different world. Uh, what we didn't anticipate, of course, was uh, the extent and the length of time that we were going to see supply chain disruptions. And we certainly did not expect Russia's invasion of Ukraine. On Friday, the S&P 500 dipped to a record low of $3,800, its lowest price since March 2020. It has since recovered slightly, though still below $4,000. Many market experts are convinced that a bigger crash lies ahead. A similar situation is playing out in the cryptocurrency market with many crypto assets, over 60% below their all-time highs. In a recent interview, Kathy Wood, the founder, chief executive officer, and chief investment officer of ARK Invest, along with Nancy Lazar, the chief global economist at Piper Sandler, discussed the current state of the global economy. Wood and Lazar compare the situation in the U.S. with the Fed just raising rates with other countries like Japan, which have been raising rates for close to a year now. They also talk about the financial market in the U.S. and how investors can navigate through all the macro issues in times like this. Both women are experts in their respective fields with adequate experience and market savviness that we believe our viewers will find refreshing. While Wood talks about the current macro situation and how it resembles the 70s, Lazar talks about the Fed tightening policies and how they could impact the economy. We will now take you to their interview. But before we do, please take a little time to hit the like button and drop your thoughts and observations about the interview in the comment section below. Thanks and enjoy. Uh, as you know, uh, everyone looks at the same data. We all get the same data. The government puts it out. Uh, but different economists place a different emphasis on certain variables at certain points in the cycle. And uh, so we were watching uh, two points of view based on the same data. Uh, one was uh, we are back in the 70s environment inflation is uh, baked into the cake. It's going to be very difficult uh, to dislodge it. Uh, and uh, we're, we're probably in a, an environment where commodity prices, real estate, uh, tangible assets generally are going to do much better uh, than the, the financial markets. So those have been variables uh, you know, we've had to work through in terms of our own thinking about the future. Uh, but we, we did come to the same conclusion uh, that we were probably going to see more deflationary forces at the end of all of this uh, than inflationary forces. And uh, I believe that we are in the early stages of seeing that. Now, this, these are the early stages, but Nancy's view of the world uh, which she every week uh, puts into charts that really help evoke what's going on. Um, her view of the world was closer to this, uh, you know, inflation is not embedded in the system at a, at a rate much like the 70s. Well, hi, Kathy. Thank you very much uh, for asking uh, me to uh, be on this uh, discussion with you today. Really, really appreciate it. And there's certainly a lot of very, very interesting things going on and some disturbing things, quite frankly, that are going on. And so there are many drivers of economic activity, but perhaps the two most important are both monetary and fiscal. Let's start out with the monetary side of the equation, which is uh, page two. And on the monetary side, the Federal Reserve is now raising interest rates. But actually, that's in a background of other central banks that have been raising rates already for over a year. Uh, we've counted over 180 central bank tightening moves. That is 180 interest rate increases over the past year, uh, not 180 central banks. There are many central banks have actually raised rates uh, uh, several, several times, which is now what our Federal Reserve is just starting to do. But we are a global economy, and it is global rates that drive uh, our economy. And it's not the level of rates. Here you see global short rates are still very, very low. Many of you would think 1.8%. Uh, gee, that's much lower than mortgage rates. What's wrong with that? But they've increased. It's the change in interest rates when you go from 0.8% to 1.8%. It's that increase that changes behavior that impact negatively impacts economic activity. 
And it doesn't happen immediately. It takes time. It takes roughly a year to change behavior. And so we are right now in a period where the economy is already starting to slow. You've certainly seen that with a lot of company news where their earnings are starting to get hit and overall economic activity is starting to slow. Um, and now the Fed is starting to raise rates. That's very different when they last had a tightening cycle, which was back in 2016. They were raising rates into an accelerating economy, and that gave them a couple of years of higher interest rates without really disrupting uh, the markets or economic momentum. That's not the case today. Uh, the economy is already slowing. Why is it already slowing? Uh, again, because global central banks have been tightening for a year. You also have higher bond yields. You have higher oil prices. All those things lead growth, and they are now in the prospect uh, of, of slowing economic activity. And now the Fed is stepping in and raising rates. We would argue they're late, uh, and these, these higher interest rates that they're putting in place risk creating financial strains. Um, and in turn, we don't think the Fed is going to be able to raise rates as much as they currently suggest, say around 200 basis points, um, because between now and then, there's gonna be clear signs that the economy is slowing and even inflationary pressures are, are going to are going to uh, come down. So we will get another rate hike. We're not so sure how aggressive the Fed's gonna be able to be in the, in, in the fourth quarter, because we think by then it's gonna be pretty clear, both growth and inflation are slowing pretty, uh, are slowing pretty uh, significantly. Lazar and would also talk about other indicators that could be signifying that growth is slowing down. For example, they note that the dollar is stronger than most other fiat currencies. But, they note, could also negatively impact the U.S. economy. Please listen to their explanation here. Yeah, uh, Nancy, I am, uh, I'm also struck. Uh, uh, the Fed is really focused on the U.S., but uh, I think Europe is in a recession. China, some of the numbers coming out of China are shocking as well. That has an impact on the rest of Asia. So they're, th what they're facing is a recession and their currencies are dropping. Their currencies are dropping relative to the dollar, which uh, means their purchasing power is going down. Uh, but it also means that some of them are tightening more because their currencies are falling against the dollar. Uh, so it's a bit of a vicious cycle. And uh, as Nancy says, I agree with you, Nancy, we are not alone. Many people are thinking about the U.S. in isolation. Uh, we've already had one quarter of negative GDP, which most people brushed aside saying, oh, that's a... Uh, uh, that that's a fluke. And, uh, you know, I don't think I think that was a real number and we should not dismiss it. So uh, agree with you totally, uh, Nancy. And, and, and I would agree with you that Europe is in, already in a recession, uh, to be sure. And don't forget the strength in the dollar to the extent their currencies are weaker. The strength in the dollar is, is actually uh, another disinflationary event here for the United uh, for the United States. So that just further increases the odds that we can see inflation slow uh, pretty pretty quickly. Yeah, so along with I was just going to say, in the old days, you know, in past cycles, many people thought that the dollar going up was a was a, the same as you know monetary tightening. It's a disinflationary force. Uh, and it's up 15 percent uh, uh, since the bottom, which is a huge increase for the dollar in such a short period of time and really hurts emerging markets. A absolutely. The, the, the dollar going up means uh, that our imports from abroad are going to be cheaper and just makes it easier. And at the same time, the dollar going up further hurts corporate corporate profits. And we're going to get to that. Uh, we're going to get to that in a, in a minute. But the other major policy driver of the U.S. economy um, is classically fiscal policy. And if we uh, go to the next slide, fiscal policy was really aggressive, uh, as many of you know, uh, either for small businesses or even big businesses, but also obviously individuals. And so government spending exploded, uh, particularly in 2001, but started in 2000. So we had two years of very, very aggressive fiscal stimulus that went in directly into consumers' hands. 
Um, and indeed, they were able to spell, uh, spend it very, very, we were be able, able to uh, spend it very, 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 very quickly. But this is very different. Uh, Kathy, you mentioned the 60s and 70s. This is very different than the 60s and 70s. You had sustained increases in government spending, starting with guns and butter in the back half of the 60s. And then, unfortunately, uh, Richard Nixon just basically took over the Fed uh, and accelerated both government spending and, uh, and money supply. Uh, net for about 15 years, starting the back half of the 60s throughout the 70s, you had aggressive, very aggressive, very rapid money uh, money supply growth uh, and government spending on a sustained basis. And I'm using that word on purpose because that is not what we had in 2021. It was basically a whipsaw. Uh, uh, I, I don't want to get into whether or not it was good or bad. I would argue uh, that it was too much in uh, March of 2021. 20, uh, the economy was already starting to heal. Uh, but nonetheless, it is what it is. Um, and I agree with your point, Kathy, that uh, this gave the consumer firepower to buy a lot of stuff. Um, and then you had the uh, port disruptions both here and in China shutting down of the ports. And that uh, indeed uh, created a shortage of goods. And so the consumers had a lot of money. They were buying a lot of stuff, but it wasn't all available from bike prices uh, to, to clothing. Uh, prices, obviously used car prices rose very sharply because we had the money to actually spend. Well, and it's very, very, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say the dotted line here uh, yeah. gives uh, gives our viewer uh, viewers a sense of how restrictive uh, spending is now, right? No, exactly. That's what the dotted line is measuring. It's, first, it measured the surge, measured the stimulus, and you can see the the orange line uh, uh, helped to drive uh, overall economic activity up very, very, very strongly. But absolutely, to Kathy's point, uh, the dotted line is now declining dramatically. Government spending is actually negative uh, 20 percent this year. Uh, and from a fiscal uh, perspective, from an economic headwind perspective, that in and of itself takes about three percentage points off of GDP this year. And so I would actually say this is at risk of creating a recession, potentially even more than the Fed, uh, because this is happening right now. Many people are struggling because those stimulus checks are gone. Um, and many people are struggling because obviously inflation has uh, surged and that's cut into real purchasing power. And a big reason is how quickly this government spending has gone from being very stimulative to be very restrictive. And a lot of that excess savings has been eaten up by, by inflation. Um, and we're now, a lot of people are struggling as a result of this fiscal, this massive fiscal drag. So the Fed is tightening into a period uh, of when fiscal policy is also even more of a headwind than currently the, 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 Fed, uh, the, Fed, the Fed is. Kathy Wood and Nancy Laser have shared some insightful professional takes on the industry. What are your thoughts about their interview? Be sure to leave a comment below and give this video a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.